Small business groups are slamming the <clears throat> Inflation Reduction Act. I clear my throat because it's laughable. President of the Job Creators Network telling Fox Business, quote, it's either going to be an increase in cost and ultimately in prices to the consumer, which is inflationary, or it's going to be a job killer. This, as a new study from Penn Wharton shows, the Manchin-Schumer deal will not reduce inflation, finding it would instead cause inflation to slowly rise until 2024 before sliding. The quote is, the impact on inflation is statistically indistinguishable from zero through 2031. Joining me now, Texas Congressman Roger Williams. He's a member of the House Financial Services Committee and vice ranking member of the Small Business Committee. Congressman, you've got a lot of ego to think, and I'm talking about Manchin and Schumer, to think that they could push this through and people wouldn't see it for what it was. And that's harmful to business, job creation, and our standard of living. No, it's, a, it's just hammers small business and Main Street. I mean, as you know, Dagan, 75% of the workforce, 75% of the payroll is from small businesses. And when you look at this and you look at their raising taxes, you got 86,000 IRS agents. That's a good message to small business. And they eliminate and carried interest. I mean, that's just, that eliminates any small business trying to save money so they can increase, uh, hire more people, increase uh, buying product. Now they've got to save money to pay the doggone taxes that they're not going to be able to pay in most cases. Right. And there's the, the study that was done that shows that almost 50% of this new tax, this is from the Joint Committee on Taxation, 50, almost 50% 50 is 49.7% of the tax, this minimum 15% minimum corporate tax would hit U.S. manufacturers. Well, it's good. yeah, manufacturing is going to get hit, retail is going to get hit. This is a disaster created by these folks that just want to continue to print money. Inflation is not going to be affected, as you said, as you said earlier. What you have to do is, 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 is you need to cut tax. I mean, when you cut tax, you put more money in the system. Businesses don't save, they spend, and you grow the economy. Like I said, now they're going to be saving money. They're going to eliminate payroll, save money so they can pay the taxes. And, that, and, it's, not, and it's really going to destroy our economy, and it's going to make it harder and harder to to, to frankly come back because unlike in 81, I remember in 81, we had, we had high rates, high inflation, but we had products to sell. The supply, the supply chain is eliminated now. So many of us, like me in the retail business, I sell automobiles, I'm a car dealer. We don't even have product to sell to claw us out of all this. So it's a disaster that they don't know the fix for. Just, just know the hammer small business, raise taxes, and that's not going to create more income. That's going to eliminate income. Did you vote in favor of that CHIPS bill, that semiconductor bill? Yeah, no, I voted against it because mm -hmm. it's not broad-based enough. It's it's uh, it, it doesn't it, it doesn't give give uh, small businesses tier two, tier three suppliers, et cetera, a chance to make it. So I voted I voted against it. It just it just was not broad enough for it, me. It, well, it's too broad if you're worried about inflation because it's a spinning boo noggle. Right. And even you know, well, it is. even it's, it's, even Bernie yeah, Sanders voted against it. When you're on the wrong side, you know, yeah, I mean, <laughs> right? Bernie Sanders got it right. He said that Intel was trying to extort money from Congress. Yeah, and it's money we don't have. I mean, we're deficit spending, and you know this. When you deficit spend and print this money, inflation goes up. And, there, and that's where we get back to talking about. There's nothing to stop inflation right now. And that particular CHIPS bill created, will create more inflation mm -hmm. with what I call funny money that we just don't have. Sean Duffy, jump in here. Former congressman. Yeah, for, <laughs> say hello to the current congressman. So, Hi, first, Roger, I have to congratulate you. The, Re the Republicans won the baseball game on Thursday night. You're a star baseball player and coach of that team, 10 to, 10 to nothing. So, congratulations on that first. Well done, Republicans. But my question for you, Roger, well, thank you. is I, I, I agree with you. We're spending way too much money. But Republicans are part of the problem. We had, you know, the Senate mm -hmm. basically approved this $280 billion CHIPS bill. Uh, 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 House Republicans voted for it. On top of that, just a year ago, Republicans passed this $1.2 trillion infrastructure bill. So we don't come to the, to the conversation of inflation with clean hands because it's not a good argument to say just Republicans are a little bit better on spending than Democrats, but we're still really bad. What's wrong with the parties that they, that they can't get spending under control and push back on Democrats and this $30 trillion in debt? 
Well, you're right. I vote against all that, as you know. But the problem is, we need to we, we need to treat our government like people treat their households. I mean, we, we can't go borrow money to pay for borrowed money. You've got to cut expenses. And as you know, Sean, there's a lot of people on both sides that don't want to cut expenses, and they get into the mandatory expense issue and all that and debate and that sort of thing. Until we agree to really cut expenses and bring, and we're not going to bring, uh, we're not going to bring inflation down. We're going to burden small business with Main Street with even more of a problem. But you're right. Both sides are wrong. We need to, we need to quit increasing debt ceilings. We need to quit spending. We need to cut like every household does. It's very simple. And, uh, but we, we don't have that right now. But I think, I think come November when Republicans take the House over, there'll be a much better, stronger uh, uh, motion and, and desire to begin to really, really try to cut expenses. We have to do it or we're running into a situation where, as you know, GDP will not even pay our interest expense. Roger Williams. Now, I don't know if Dagan knows this, Roger. Do you guys the, Dagan, he's a, he's a car dealer, and these car yep. dealers understand business and consumers really well, and that's why Roger is so great in the house, and other car dealers that we have as well do a fantastic job. I appreciate that, Roger. Thank you very much, Sean. Yeah, I love internal combustion engines. I always will. I <laughs> Mate, don't care at, what the left says. Try, try to pull a horse trader, Dagan, from Weatherford, Texas to Midland, Texas, an electric vehicle and a jet ski and a boat behind it. Not going to work. Congressman Roger Williams, we will leave it with that. Thank you, sir.